Hi everybody, so I've managed to catch up with Keith Foot from SWATCOM here. Um, glorious weather, oh, as fair. always. Fantastic, um, apart from not being able to stand up in the wind. Exactly, no, it's nice. <laughs> Good um, old bywell weather, mm -hmm. isn't it? And just thought it was quite a nice thing. Something that I've always personally wondered as well, SWATCOM's a name that we've seen on the shooting, you know, shooting industry. So, you know, people are familiar with the products and things. But I just thought it'd be quite interesting. How how did that kind of journey start, Keith? How did it? Where did it kind of build from, and to what it is that we're not today, really? Well, when I was at boarding school, we started a little clay pigeon club, and that got me bitten into. Well, I got the bug for clay shooting when I was 16, something like that. Right. And then I went into farming, continued a bit of clay shooting, rough shooting, you know, vermin, all that sort of thing. Thoroughly enjoyed it in amongst farming did farming for 20 years and then uh, got married, uh, went into photography and photography needed uh, a bit of topping up on the money side so I got a part-time job at a manufacturer of hearing protection All right. mm -hmm. and that, I was in the um, UK subsidiary and ended up making a quarter of a million earmuffs for the army. All right, be so I, I went there for two money. weeks and stayed there 10 years. <laughs> it, it was quicker than 10 years to make the, the quarter million, but the point was it got me into this industry mm -hmm. and I just really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the buying, the selling, I loved dealing with the Swedish companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, after 10 years, I started up my company Talking Headsets. Right. And Talking Headsets, we um, became an exclusive distributor for a company called Sordine mm -hmm. and we started promoting the Sordine brand around the UK, <coughs> excuse me, and it evolved from there and it was just me on my own for four years in a tin Still shed right. in the garden and it really was as basic as that and uh, then we recruited a, a techie guy and my wife joined the business and we slowly, slowly um, got more market share, we took on more products and during that period we needed to make some uh, products for the uh, petrochemical industry and we invented, created the name Swatcom right. and the Swatcom brand was then put onto these radio accessories that went into high explosive environments on oil. And, and when was that? What sort of year was that? That was really probably, SWATCOM? the Swatcom brand probably started around 2004, 2005. Right. But it was not in this industry at all. Yes. Nothing in this industry. And then it progressed and our, our range grew, do a lot of wireless communication products, all Swatcom branded. We have the manufactured, you know, manufacturing plants around the world. And five years ago, we um, went to Sordine and asked them to make a, a high-end product in, to try and bring into this industry, the clay shooting hunting industry. And initially, Pretty much everyone poo-pooed it that it was going to be too expensive for this market yeah. or those markets. But we persevered and it took us a year to start getting a bit of traction. And then we collaborated with CPSA. Uh, I stuck my neck above the parapet and went, I really believe in this. <clears throat> and we sponsored CPSA for three years. We've just started our fourth year now and it has really helped us get our brand established within this industry um, but it's got to be supported by a great backup team back at our factory we've got 10 people back there mm -hmm. uh, but it's about you guys as well you bought into us you bought into our quality and you bought into the, how our range is expanding and now we don't offer one product we've got lots of products yeah because that's the thing you were originally known for one particular it was product. one product it was the activate got us in the industry and pretty much for two years that's all we sold into this industry but now we've got <coughs> passive and active in-ear uh, and passive and active over-ear so we've got everything that really a shooter could want mm -hmm. uh, some like big cans some don't like cans at all some like in-ear and some don't want to hear anything because so that's we, what we find in the you know the gun room where people's trying guns and some people the way they mount the gun it catches their face it catches yeah, their earmuffs yeah. some of them don't yeah and obviously everyone's just got a different and there's that many types of well, you'll have probably learned this over the years of clear shooting. There's the trap shooters who like one particular type of thing, and then you've got the sporting shooters, the game shooters. It's all yeah, very it, much it different. It is very so different. It. So, your game shooter won't take a passive muff and go out, you know, a big bulky passive muff and go out shooting game. Mm -hmm. 
they need to hear what yeah, what's happening is going on around them like and and they want something that's more in keeping with the surround so mm -hmm. normally green activates yeah. and if they're done they're perfect so they they go out by the bucket load to that mm -hmm. sort of industry and then as well i know we're, well, we spent a bit of time chatting yesterday you now do the the molded options yeah. as well so which again it's not even something i was aware of no so, so we've we've started big time in custom fit probably a year now um, and we've we've had some supply issues with components but that's all behind us now yeah. so now when we come up here for the worlds we'll have our technician here to do all the impressions and uh, that'll be a very popular service so we can do that either as just total blocks of, as a passive or we can put our electronics in there mm -hmm. and we've also got products we're developing behind so you know in the next few months there'll be more new products coming into this industry so and we're not sitting sitting still we no, keep always, evolving and developing moving. yeah and interestingly how are you finding the like your sales of the inner compared to the outer is, are they kind of growing more people are more aware of the plugs and yeah the, the in ear is um growing rapidly the over ear um it still amazes me that they keep flying out the door because like the activate with a five-year warranty you can almost shoot yourself in the foot by having too long a warranty yeah. but th there's th that's really endorsed the product but, but no i think as well i mean we find this with some of the products we sell it, i think the warranty speaks a lot of volumes because if someone's going to invest you know biggish money in something yeah. like that but at the end of the day you've got to look at your hair and all your eyes things like that it's, it's invaluable anyway yeah and you know you're buying something that's going to last you yeah and if you've got the the kind of the backup that you know if something goes wrong in three years four years then yeah. People's quite happy to invest, we support that it. investment. Yeah, yeah we, we support it. And we want happy customers. Our customers keep coming back. Lots of people come up here, just say hello, thanks for the great product, really enjoying it, had a couple of years now. That's priceless to us. That's what it's about. It really is. And having you guys, you know, coming to buy well um, and having you want to put our products on your shelf means a lot to us. So, and that's your that's buying into our brand. We're always keen as well to learn, and I've yeah. learned a lot this weekend, you know, yeah, we're to be honest. And, uh, and, but it's also nice how it ties into the fact that you're kind of more into your clear shooting now. Because I, I am. Saying, is, it, is it a year ago nearly since you yeah. did Yeah, well, a year ago was my first competitive down the line, and I really got bitten by the bug. So this weekend I've shot all three layouts, uh, thoroughly enjoyed it all, but it's a different challenge up here it's to what I'm used yeah. to. Yeah, but, I was going to say, what's the, some of the grounds you shoot down there, different backgrounds? Yeah, different... NCSC, you know, I do a lot of trap shooting there. That's a great layout. do my local clubs fair, I'm doing ABT down there. Um, but you can't just use that as your comfort zone, or it is your comfort zone, but you've got to move outside of it. And Definitely. so coming up here, it's been a great learning curve for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Great squad of people with uh, Ian at CPSA and Carl and Tony from from Ely. It's been a great squad and thankfully I beat them all. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll be, yeah. That'll cause some friction. Yeah, there. yeah. It's the Ely cartridges that do it. Is that what it is? Yeah, definitely. Of course you'll be shooting a brown and gun as well, are you? No, no, I'm a, I'm oh, a no. Parazzi boy now. <laughs> Just got on to Parazzi, so yeah. And do you, do you take, because obviously you, know, you sponsor one of the big big events through with the CPSA, do you, do you partake in when they have like the sporting events? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Shoot it badly. Indeed. I was going to say, do they sometimes get their own back and then? Yeah, oh, God, yeah. Them? Yeah, I think the four of us are... Tony's probably more of a sporting shooter, but Carl and, and um, Ian and myself are really into trap now. Uh, and so when I do a bit of sporting, uh, if I do 60 or 70% on a championship course, I'm pretty pleased with that. Mm -hmm. But I have a lot of fun. Well, you've got... That's the main thing, isn't it? It's yeah, about having fun. It's about fun. having a laugh and... Yeah. I think any of these events, this is as much as we say to the shooters, it's about seeing everyone. That yeah, it is. And yeah, it's priceless. And we, you know, we spend a lot of time basically in a field, but I enjoy it all. Mm -hmm. well, that's, Except that's... when it's chucking it down. <laughs> Which it doesn't happen very often, especially... I'll yeah. never hear. No. But I want to thank you guys for having us up here. Well, it's been a great time. week, and I, I really am looking forward to... Um, to July to the worlds. Yeah. Um, like, a like a little taster for what's coming. Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Not just from the point of view of, you know, promoting our products and seeing people, but to be able to take part in the events mm -hmm. and compete with the best in the world mm -hmm. um, means a lot to me, just yeah. having a go. And I think we're very lucky that we'll forget it. 
a little bit blase in some ways. It's it's the world's DTL, yeah, you know. The world. It was last year, 20 years ago, and I think previous to that, it was a significant amount of time it was in the UK. Oh, so, really? Um, yeah, it's, it, to actually have it here and yeah. you know, that people, because you know, it's a big commitment. Some people have to travel abroad normally to do it, whether because I think recently it's been in like South Africa places. Yeah, like that. yeah. So to actually have it here is, is great for a lot of shooters, you know. I think you're putting a lot of effort into that and i think you're going to put on a great event from what i can hear so we're really looking forward to Hopefully that we'll get some nice uh, let's nice just hope weather. it's like this but the wind can drop a little bit if it can sun cream at the ready oh yes can't wait no, but no it's been nice to catch up well and, uh, really great thank, thank you for your hospitality look forward thank to seeing you. you in july cheers thank you